Okay, time to talk about cheap records once again. I'm your host. <laughs> I'm going to cut the uh, preamble short because I got a lot of stuff to talk about. I don't know why I picked out so many records, but that's life. Okay. So without further ado, we are listening to... Okay, so this is all European jazz and maybe a little fusion-y type stuff. Most of it's kind of jazz. Maybe you won't think this is heat. I think these are all great records and they're all really cheap. Um, this is probably the most expensive one, actually. Human Chain, their first record. Um, I lived in England for a couple of years, 1993-92, and Django Bates and company were all the rage. And Human Chain is uh, Django Bates on keyboards, and I think he plays some trumpet and guitar on this. Um, plus Steve Arguelles on drums and percussion, and Stuart Hall on um, guitar. I actually, I don't think Stuart Hall's on this. I think it's just Bates and Arguelles on this. And Dudu Puguana is on a couple of tracks. Anyway, it's a really cool record. It's more quirky than funky, as you can hear. And every track is really different with really different um, instrumentation. And it's just two guys. They later added a guitar player named Stuart Hall, who's uh, really interesting and really cool. This is their first record, though. And they were in a big band called Loose Tubes. And I have those records as well. And if you're into big band music, definitely check out the Loose Tubes. They're a, they're a fantastic band. And you'll recognize all the players. Okay, so we're going to talk about some piano trios first. One of my favorite musicians in the universe, Joaquin Kuhn. Hope you can see this. Joaquin Kuhn, J.F. Jenny Clark, and Daniel Humer. And this record is called... Shoot, I can't even read it. Easy to read. Ha! Huh. Easy to read. This is one of the most fantastic piano trio records you'll ever hear. Um, it's... No electronics or anything like that, no jazz rock or fusion, but high energy all the way through. It rivals those Joanne Brackeen records in terms of its energy and virtuosity. These guys just slay, slay, and then they slay more. <laughs> it's a great record. I can't remember if this is a follow-up or if it came after. I think it was before Easy to Read, because this is on a different... I think that's on Owl, and this is on CMP, so this is... I think this precedes that same band. What came Kuhn, Daniel, Humer, JF, Jenny Clark on bass. And um, this is called From Time to Time Free. And, and it's not as outside as you might think. Um, it's a really, again, high energy piano trio record. Um, these guys are great. Um, a huge fan of all three. And, um, and check it out. Anyway, anything that What Came Kuhn does is generally worth checking out. Here's a record I just got recently, another piano trio record with um, the same drummer, Daniel Humer on it. Swiss drummer, um, also a chef, also a famous chef. Anyway, this is a killing, killing record. I did not expect this to be that good, but it's a bassist named Cesarius Alvim, who's Brazilian, and a pianist from France named Jean-Pierre Mas, and Daniel Humer on drums. And this is another high energy, high virtuosity uh, piano trio. No electronics, it's all acoustic, but it's all interesting and it's all fire. It's a really great record. And the title is Jamais Two Sans Three. I'm not quite sure what that means. Never two without three. Maybe they always play as a trio. They did another record um, that was released in the US on Inner City. Uh, I think it's uh, an address is in the title, Rue de Lormel. I haven't heard that one. But this is, a, this is a great record. And I put everything in a list in the comments, so um, you can find all the records down there. And keep in mind, well, some of these are little small labels, and they only have a couple of pressings. But uh, anything on a major label is going to have several pressings, so always be sure to look at all the different pressings if you're not a stickler about having the OG. Here's a piano player that I only became aware of in the last few years. Um, again, remarkably virtuosic uh, a pianist from Europe. This guy is Dutch, and his name is uh, Rene van Helsdingen. And I think he, inv I think he invented crowdfunding, because if you look at the cover of this record, it's 
got all these names on it. These are all the people and all the companies and all of his supporters, and he put their name on the cover. This record's from 19, uh, I think late 70s, early 80s. And it's a quartet, actually. It's not a trio. Most of his records are trios. Um, but uh, this is a quartet, and it's really excellent. It's on the Munich label. And it's got a name if you follow the, the Dutch fusion, like I do. It's got a couple of names on it you're going to recognize. Um, it's produced by a guy named Hank Zomer, who also played with, um, played drums in uh, Sal Hulstingen's band. Um, he's not on this record. He's on a bunch of his other records. Um, this record features uh, uh, Abdullah Ibrahim's rhythm section, um, Essiet Okun Essiet on bass, and John Mumford on drums. Excellent, excellent players. And a saxophonist named Peter Guidi. And uh, all original stuff, um, very challenging, but not out. Uh, modern modal jazz, this is an excellent record. And, uh, and again, uh, if you don't know how to spell Helsdingen, um, this record's called Motivation. And it's by the Helsdingen Quartet. Here's another Helsdingen record where he did the same thing with the cover. It's on the Timeless label. Uh, it never got picked up by Muse in the US, but some of these things are only import only. Pretty much everything I'm going to show today is import only. This one is just a trio, and it's with uh, basically two guys who became his regular rhythm section for well over a decade. Egbert Van Groethuizen on drums and Brian Batty on bass, and um, that's electric and acoustic bass. And there's some singing on it, um, but it's really cool singing. And I think he married a woman from Indonesia, and so there's some Indonesian influence on this. In fact, most of his more recent recordings, Renee Van Helsendingen, um, she's featured on violin and vocals, and they have a very strong uh, Indonesian uh, Balinese influence. It's really, really interesting music. I don't have any of them. I've just checked them out on YouTube. And uh, I'm, I'm, they're on my want list, what can I say? And they're CDs. I, I, I love CDs. But anyway, this is a great record. This is just called Helsing and Jazz. And um, it's on Timeless and it's cheap. And again, all of his corporate sponsors uh, are all on the cover. And um, this is like the beginning of, of crowdfunding. <laughs> and it's a great record. It's a really a great record. And Rene Van Helsdingen is kind of a hero. He's, um, unfortunately he's fallen ill, but he's, he keeps playing. And there's a bunch of YouTube videos featuring him and his art and, and, uh, and, and what he's putting up with health-wise. He's an amazing human being. Strongly advise you to check Rene Van Helsdingen out. Gonna get into um, larger groups now. This is a record I just added in. Like I like to get a bunch of records from Europe because it cuts down on the postage instead of ordering one here, one there, two here, two there. I try to get five, six, seven at a time. And that way you reduce postage. So I got this in one of those bricks. And uh, I got it because I don't even know why I got it. It was really, really cheap is one of the reasons. The main artist on this record and its debut album uh, by Dag Arneson and the record is called Knee Briss. And um, if you're really into Carla Bley, it's like the greatest Carla Bley album ever made without Carla Bley on it. It's very, to my ears, it's very influenced by Carla Bley. And um, it, it's a core group, a sextet, I believe. Um, guitar, bass, uh, keyboards, Arneson is a keyboard player, who plays a lot of Hammond B3 on this. Um, saxophone, trumpet, and drums. And then there's additional horns on certain tracks. And um, he's, I believe, he's Norwegian. So all the musicians on this record are Norwegian. And uh, it's really great. There's a little bit of vocals on this. Doesn't kill the buzz. Um, just really interesting, really cool music. A real sleeper. Nebris by um, Dag Arneson. I really like this. Hard filed. Hard filed to the max. Here's another name. This person unfortunately passed away really recently. It was really sad um, to see that uh, she'd been ill. Uh, Barbara Thompson, a uh, British hero, uh, saxophone, saxophone player, flute player, and composer. And this is her debut uh, album as a leader. And it is some really excellent fusion. Really great band. Uh, Harold Fisher on drums. Um, he's on one of my favorite records, uh, um, Mirror Image. 
Um, should check that out. Some heavy fusion on that. Um, Roy Babington from Soft Machine on bass guitar and uh, Colin Dudman on keyboards. The keyboards are all um, all analog Rhodes, uh, analog uh, synthesizers. Um, really cool stuff, really great compositions. Um, really an excellent record and goes for next to nothing. And this is just called um, Paraphernalia. And later on, she just called this group Paraphernalia. And eventually her husband, the late uh, John Heisman, joined the band in, instead of Harold Fisher. But um, this is her debut and this is, I mean, you know, people talk about British jazz and the classics and Nucleus and all that. And Paz, that's another great band whose records have got, just gone crazy. They were everywhere when I was living in England. Um, this is still cheap and it's right up there with all that stuff, I think. So Barbara Thompson's backing band formed their own band and they're called 20th Century Blues and they're on this great label, MMC Records, small uh, audiophile label. They also did that Sunwind record that I talked about last time. So this is uh, this is Colin Dudman, Dill Katz on bass, uh, Nick France on drums and percussion, and a violinist named Peter Harley. And this is some smoke and fusion, let me tell you. Really, really cool. Um, you know, kind of mellow in spots, uh, but there's a lot on this record to love. And again, all analog keyboards, lots of roads, lots of synth, uh, involved compositions. Um, this record has it all. It's really excellent. Um, can't say enough good things about it. I've had it for many years and, and it's, it was cheap then, it's cheap now. So 20th Century Blues, look it up, 20th C Blues. Um, really, anything, well, Dill Katz was later on in the, um, shoot, he was in the South African inspired band, whose name I can't recall right now, that had Chris McGregor, uh, District 6. He was in District 6, one of the main guys in that band. And um, yeah, Nick France, great, great British drummer. So. Check it out, there's some pedigree there. So, um, this is back in the 70s, and this is a great record, Flute Summit. If you like the flute, you gotta get this. And look at the players on this. Chris Hins, Sahib Shihab, James Moody, and Jeremy Stein, all together on the same record. The rhythm section is what turned me on. Um, Joaquin Kuhn on, on piano and Fender Rhodes. Um, I think it's... Uh, who is on drums? Aldo Romano, I believe. Uh, and John Lee on bass from John Lee and Jerry Brown fame. Oh, and uh, um, Mandrake on percussion. He's quite prominent in places. So this is a really excellent fusion record all the way through. Lots of groovy stuff, lots of roads, lots of flute. Um, there's some tracks without a drummer. Um, there's a like a flute and piano duet. There's a free improv with just the four flute players. There's some really, they're, they're short though. The vast majority of this record is uh, not heavy fusion, but like plugged in jazz with, you know, interesting energy. I really like this record a lot. It was another cheap one that I got sort of on a whim. This, this, these records are by a drummer I've been a fan of ever since the get-go. Um, when I was a kid, I, I read a review in Crawdaddy Magazine about um, Eberhard Weber and the Colors of Chloe. And there's two drummers on that record that were fascinating to me. Peter Geiger is one, and the other one is Ralph R. Hubner. Well, it turns out Ralph R. Hubner is an amazing player. Um, he played in uh, Albert Mangelsdorf's band for many years and a number of other really interesting groups. He, he cut a couple of his own records, and these are great. These are sort of like 80s latter-day fusion they're very similar to the Manfred Schuff records on JPO, if you're familiar. Um, they've got that same kind of almost ECM sort of feel, and but they all feature like a lot of electronic keyboards and not cheesy electronic keyboards, really cool electronic keyboards. And the guys on this, it's Jasper Vantoff is on this, as you might be able to read. Christoph Lauer, we've talked about him before, uh, amazing tenor saxophone player. And uh, Thomas Hedaprim, who's um, kind of on a lot of these records. This is on the Tryon label. And a lot of these Tryon label records, again, it's an uh, audiophile German label. A lot of these records are not expensive at all. So maybe check out the whole label if you're into it. Um, anyway, this is called Courage for the Past. I've had this for many years. And it's really excellent. He did another one called Pearl Boot that came, I think, out a couple years later. 
And this has more or less the same personnel. But instead of Jasper Van Toff, you have uh, Rainer Bruninghaus on piano and keyboards. And Bruninghaus' influence is very strong on this. Um, I don't know if he wrote any of the tunes, but he just has a very particular imprint as a keyboardist. This is another excellent record, maybe a little less heavy on the electric keyboards than the previous one, but uh, no less wonderful and very cheap from the 80s. But honestly, this is a really great record. So Pearl Boot by Ralph R. Huber. Another German group you should pay attention to with the same bass player, Thomas Hedepri, is this very uh, humbly packaged quartet record by Christoph Spendel, another fine uh, German keyboard player. It's called Limousine. He plays acoustic and electric keyboards in this. A lot of roads on this. Uh, Spendel later on made a bunch of records that are almost sort of a little, maybe a little too smooth for some of us, but uh, some people might really dig them. He's played with a zillion people though. He's been around. I think he played with like Billy Cobham and people like that. Great band on this. Michael Sagmeister, who we talked about previously on guitar, excellent player, and Joe Tonis on drums, who um, really stirs it up. He's a really fine drummer. Um, there's another record back here with him on it, and he just crushes it, man. Anyway, this is a pretty cool record. This is sort of a latter day, uh, early 80s uh, jazz rock fusion record. There's some more straight ahead jazz sounds on it. It's dirt cheap and um, it really delivers. Four long tracks, two per side. That's always a good sign, right? Um, I really like this a lot. It's got some congas on it, some funky stuff going on. Uh, just a really fine record, despite the rather humble cover art. I was talking about Joe Tonus on drums and German groups. <laughs> this is Uli Beckerhoff, really excellent uh, trumpet player. He was in a group called Riot. Their records are not that cheap, but now um, yeah, they're kind of marginally cheap. You might want to check them out. Anyway, uh, this is a really fine record. I've got a couple of things by him. Later on, he played with Jasper Van Toff and John Marshall um, in the 80s. This is one of his earlier um, solo efforts. This is from 1981. Joe Tonis on drums and Siggy Bush on bass. Of course, um, Beckerhoff plays trumpet and flugelhorn. And then there's um, trumpet. Oh no, a vibe player. Vibes on this, no keyboards. Um, the vibes player is Stefan Bauer and Ed Kroger on uh, piano. All acoustic, um, kind of a modal advanced uh, sort of ECM-like floating jazz feel on this, but the first track on the first side, um, Joe Tonus really gets the solo and it's just like, whoa, where'd this guy come from? He's an animal. Anyway, Uli Beckerhoff, really interesting uh, uh, musician from Germany. Check out Riot, too. Uh, I don't know what the prices are like on those records, but um, I've got them. There's two, and uh, those are really good. So I'm going to talk about a bunch of Dutch guys now. I got this album a while back, and I had my doubts about it. Um, so it's one of these funny records with funny personnel. This Herman Schunderwald, really fine uh, Dutch saxophonist, but he's more of a almost like a kind of a Dixieland guy. And I, I just wasn't sure like if this was gonna be like cheesy. Um, and then it's got uh, Jan Hoitz on it, who's an amazing, amazing keyboard player, plays all Rhodes on this and some synthesizer. And Leo de Reuter, who uh, was in a band called Nepalis, fine drummer. And that's like a heavy fusion album that you need to check out, Nepalis, but it's not cheap. And Kus Sirius is a, is a great bass player. I'm sure I'm murdering his name. Anyway, put this on. The first track is kind of like mellow ballad. I'm not into it. Second track, killing, uh, uh, post bitches brew sort of Miles thing. And then the second side is is good solid modal jazz with Fender Rhodes. So um, this is kind of a cool record. The group is called Basic Train, and uh, the album is called Basic Train. It's on a little label out of uh, the Netherlands, and it's it's cheap and it's rather plentiful. And it's a good record. I'm gonna stay in Holland for the last few records. This is one of my favorite records of all time, Free Fair. These guys are uh, the, some of the greatest musicians, greatest jazz musicians ever to come out of the Netherlands. They're in groups like the Diamond Five and uh, I believe the Dick Venink. Uh, Dick Venink, the, I think he's the saxophone player on this? Yes, he had his own group, that's amazing. Um, some of those records back in the 70s, they're a little bit more expensive. I know the first Diamond 5 records are impossible to get. Anyway, this is them trying their hands at fusion. 
and it's uh, it's all electric keyboards, uh, saxophone, drums, bass, and uh, congas. And it's a really, really, I mean, if you're into fusion at all, you need the Free Fair record. This record did come out in the US. This is the British, and not this is the Euro press. The American press came out on Timeless Muse, and it's got this horrible cover of these like stoned looking dudes like sitting around a table. And it's just, I don't know, to me, it's just awful. Really, I would have sued. Um, this comes with a, a, a sheet of the cover art that you can, it says in Dutch, from what I gather, you can you can color it in while you listen to the record, very cute. Um, anyway, this is a must have for anybody who's into fusion at all. This is a tremendously good record. They did a follow up, they did two follow ups. And Free Fair 2, same guys, uh, minus the conga player. It's all acoustic, but um, they play like they have their pants on fire. It's a really, uh, it's a really heavy, modern, uh, modal jazz record. It's not really a free jazz record, but um, it's really an excellent record, but it's not uh, plugged in. But the same guys, Rob Vanderbroke on it, um, an amazing piano player, played with Chris Hins and had his own bands, did a lot of really cool music over the years. And um, Harry Emery on bass, Eric Inneke on drums, and of course Dick Venick on all manner of reeds. It's a great record if you're into the acoustic jazz at all. Okay, um, Ben Gerritsen Quartet, Inside Rumors, uh, basically a private issue uh, jazz record out of the, out of the Netherlands. Um, really, really excellent. This, I was talking about Hank Zomer earlier. This is why I got it. It's got Hank Zomer playing drums on it. He, he's crushing it in, a, in an acoustic jazz mode. Um, Harry Emery on bass from Free Fair and Rob Vanderbroek also from Free Fair. Gerritsen is a vib vibraphone player, so it's kind of like a modern jazz quartet sort of instrumentation, court, you know, vibes, piano, bass, and drums. But it's not a mellow jazz record by any stretch. It's a, it's a hard charging sort of, uh, uh, you know, not out, but uh, very modern and very uh, interesting jazz record that's uh, very underrated, way under the radar, and highly available for little little money. And if you're in Europe, you should pick this up. Uh, ben Gerritsen Quartet, only thing he ever recorded, kind of sad. Last two records. Um, this is a real sleeper for me, I almost never got it. Jean-Pierre de Barbat, he had the uh, Dolphin Orchestra, uh, recorded some great fusion records with them, and then he did kind of a uh, an all standards thing that I really didn't like. And then this was after that, and I thought, well, if this is anything like that all standards record, I'm not interested. But if you look at the personnel, it's Cesarius Alvin, the bass player from uh, that tr piano trio record I talked about. Andre Seccarelli, one of the greatest drummers ever to walk the face of the earth, one of my favorites. Tony Bonfils on bass and Michelle Grayer from Magma on piano. And there's a big horn section, but it's not really a big band record. The big horn section is kind of used as an as a instrument of it, in and of itself. This is a really great record, really long tracks, very complex and intricate composing, com compositions, and great playing. De Barbat is next level. Really excellent record, super cheap, cost me like five euros. And you know, just tuck that in that stack of four or five records that you're buying. Anyway, this is called Deluxe, and it's from 81. So you'd think, uh, you know, it's beginning to get bad. It's not. And I think there, there's, um, yeah, Fender bass and acoustic bass on this. And I th think, no, it's all, I think Gry 8 plays all just acoustic piano on it. The last album I'm going to talk about is the most sleeper album I've bought in a long time. Part of the reason why is, and let's not, you know, make any bones about it, it's all, it's an all-woman group from Germany. And, um, and, and, you know, a lot of people just pass over all women groups. I don't. <laughs> I never do. Because um, I, I had to listen to this. I, I was actually found this in a, in a digging uh, setting. I didn't mail order this. I got it. I think they gave it to me for free in the end because I bought so much stuff. Anyway, this is a quintet. Um, Marion Stefan Wittek on drums. Ula Oster on bass, she also, and, and uh, bass is, she plays electric and acoustic. She also wrote most of the music. Heike Beckman on uh, keyboards, but mostly acoustic piano. Heike Rolig on tenor, 
and Monica Haas on soprano and alto saxophones. Anyway, this is a really outstanding record. It's on a great label, which is kind of why I was interested in it. It's on jazz house music. I've gotten a number of excellent, excellent jazz records on that label. Um, and this record is no exception. All original compositions, um, playing, they're all like on fire. Uh, it's really, really an excellent record. And I think there's copies uh, for like, on, on Discogs anyway, for like three, four euros. I mean, but, but if you're into acoustic jazz, it's from the 80s, I think 86, but it, there's no cheesy synth on it. Um, if you're into, you know, modern jazz, it's, you know, got a reasonable amount of complexity and interest to it. Um, you need to get this. The band is called Schwarzwald Model, I think, Madel. It's, it's Schwarzwald women, Black Forest women. And, um, and the title of the record is simply the letter F. And, or it could be the other way around. They could be just called F and Schwarzwald Madel. Anyway, I'll put all the information on this and everything else I talked about. Um, in the comment section below and, um, or, you know, the little text section that they allow us to say things in. Um, and, and you can leave your comments telling me what you think. Anyway, th that's cheap heat. It's cheap Euro heat, uh, Euro jazz heat. And, um, I can't guarantee you're going to love all these records as much as I do, but I can guarantee you that I love all these records. <laughs> anyway, uh, stay cool. I uh, got my bandana and my hat on. I was just out cleaning the grill and getting ready to barbecue. Uh, take care, y'all.